All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show on the entire planet. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing a novel from one of my favorite writers of all time, and that is Greg Isles. And we are going to be reviewing Mortal Fear, the third novel he ever wrote. Now I'm kind of reading and reviewing reviewing the Greg Isles books <clears throat> in order of their publication. So I've already read and reviewed Spandau, Phoenix, and Black Cross, which are his two World War II thriller novels, and they were great. Absolutely fantastic. I loved those. And then, for his third novel, he kind of did an about-face and just wrote a straight-up murder mystery. Um... Dude seemed like he was on a trajectory to be the next like Robert Ludlum thriller writer, and then turns out those two World War II books were the only thrillers he ever really wrote, and then he turned into a mystery writer. <clears throat> One of the best mystery writers ever in the history of the world. I mean, just great. Um, this came out in 1997. I remember reading it when it came out, because I was already a, a fan of uh, Greg Isles' books back then. In fact... I've got all of my Greg Isles books signed. Well, most of them. I think I think he signed all these for me in about the year 2005-ish. So a lot of his more, I probably about half my collect. Well, I got my collection over here. Let's take a look. Pan through my massive library and there's my Greg Isles collection. <clears throat> I'd say a little over half of those he signed to me. Um, so grateful for him for doing that. And you know I always like to uh, show off my signed book collection. Ah, that's a little, the camera's going to be a little crooked. We're just going to have to deal with it. Um, <clears throat> just deal with it along with all the other shitty production values of my channel. But there's the si signature. Not sure if I even showed you that yet. But anyway, you got it twice or once. I don't care. Anyway, so this book starts out, six women are murdered. Um, there's a connection to the murders, and it's through this uh, website called Eros. Keep in mind, this book was written in 1997. So this is this book was written in the in, infancy of the internet, really. Um, and we're going to discuss that a lot because it's interesting to read a story about high-tech internet stuff from 1997. Okay, so Eros, it is an online sex chat website, um, 1990s style. Um, to join this website, though, however, you have to pay $1,000 just to join. And then a $500 a month fee to keep on the website so you can do sex chat. I, I mean, I'm like, holy shit. Really? Back then, that's what it cost just to type in your little sex fetishes to other people? Good almighty. But it's kind of expensive because it turns out that this Eros website is an exclusive website for like I get kind of rich people to use. I mean, you have to qualify. And then, then the steps that you have to go through just to pay the fees is, 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 is kind of like all these hoops that the website makes you jump through just to pay the fee to join the website. Um, I wouldn't have jumped through any of those hoops. It's just, I mean, because nowadays you can just get on your phone. You know, and it's not even sex chat. It's like you can literally get on your phone, dial up any of a hundred websites that just have women there. Not that I've heard. I've heard. Not that I, what, from what I hear, other people tell me, there's thousands of websites. You can just dial them up and there are women right there on video that will do all sorts of depraved things for you that you don't even have to pay for let alone i mean that's it's free and 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 a thousand dollars to sign up for eros and then 500 a month just you don't even get visuals you don't even get pictures or video it's chatting that's how antiquated the old internet it's like stone age in internet it's like just i was like reading this and being i was like oh my god this was a, a high-tech thriller back in the day because it talked about all this stuff. It got into the minutia of how it happened and, like I said, how people pay for it. 
and the hoops they had to jump through to just to to pay for it and to keep their secrecy online and so anyway harper cole he works for this company eros i mean he's the first person that kind of sort of understands that these women are being killed like there's a serial killer killing women that belong to his website well how does he figure this out again it's just bonkers to think about <coughs> he's like there he goes to the fbi and he's like hey listen we've had some women that were on our website on this sex chat website well they haven't logged into their accounts for a few months so i'm worried that they might be dead I mean, can you imagine today, like Tinder or uh, Pornhub, like someone working at Pornhub is like, hey, there's a p few people here that uh, ain't uh, logged on to their Pornhub account in a little while. Um, I think maybe I should tell the FBI that they're dead. No, it would, I mean, but here's back in the day, this was like, like I said, it's an exclusive sex chat website that only really rich people can do. And... Um, on top of that, it's like, there's like 80% men that have signed up for it and only like a handful of women, right? And so, but that's typical of dating websites or any sex thing online. It's like 90% of the people on any dating website are dudes that are just swiping yes on every girl, hoping that one of them, they'll swipe left on 10,000 profiles hoping that just one of them might be a real person and that the, if it is a real person that it, that they message back meanwhile the five to ten percent of women that are on that website are just getting messaged by a hundred million men daily right it's just the and and he makes point of that back in 1997 it was still the same way like literally harper cole the guy that works for the company is like the reason i know these women are, have, are, are might be missing and dead is because there they were one of a there, there weren't that many women on our website so it's very noticeable when they're not there we want them there we need them there to message back these hundreds of dudes that are talking to them right and um it's just i was just enjoying the book for all the wrong reasons because i'm just like how I like again stone age internet dating stone age stone age porns internet porn really is so anyway yeah so the uh yeah and like most of these uh websites you know it's they, they get so few women interested in doing this crap that the few women that they have they want to stick around so the women don't even have to pay anything to be on the website no the women don't have to pay jack shit they can just be on it it's the men that have to pay the thousand dollar fee and the five hundred dollars a month. But the most of the time, the men, he's like, yeah, the the women, the few women that we have, we're grateful for them, and so that now that they're missing, we really miss them, because now we have to have dudes behind the computer screen pretending to be hot women, having, you know, online sex in a chat room with these dudes, and so he's like, yeah. So uh, anyway, the, anyway, what happens is an investigation ensues. The FBI immediately think that Harper Cole is the murderer because, of course, he's the one that said, hey, I think these women are missing. They go, the FBI goes searching for these women, and they're all across the country. And, yeah, sure enough, they are found dead or they've been murdered, and there's been murder cases, uh, unsolved murder cases in these. But he was the one that kind of put the whole, tied the whole thing together. Anyway, uh, he's now he's the number one suspect. Um, but they're kind of also using him. The police are kind of also using him because they ask him, hey, why don't you pose? You know, you talk about posing as a sex talker. Well, we need you to go keep doing that posing as a sex talker. And we want to see if you can't lure the murderer out of the shadows. And of course, he agrees to this because he's like, well, I got to do it because they think I'm the murderer. So maybe I, I mean, maybe this is a way out. And then so he starts posing as a pretty woman chatting sex chats to these dudes and his wife doesn't like that at all of course so um the whole thing <laughs> um it's very well written it's actually so well written i was almost torn in half because i'm like this is probably something that would have been riveted and it was a riveting read for me back when i first read it i just didn't remember anything about it because i read it back in 97 when it first came out and i remember 
all of Greg Isles' books have been riveting reads, but now I'm thinking to myself, this is no longer a riveting read, because it's all I'm doing is laughing at the antiquated uh, internet stuff and uh, the antiquated like sex chats and uh, internet dating and all of that, and how at the time it seems like Greg Isles was breaking such ground, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this kind of stuff is happening on the internet. Oh my gosh. Now it just seems trite, cliche, obvious. Like I can't really see why anybody would read this nowadays and um, not have the same reaction I had where great writing, great characters, the plot uh, old, just the plot is seriously dated. Um, but you can't fault Greg Isles for that, because at the time, it wasn't. The time it came out, it wasn't. Um, now, yeah, now it's a little eye-rolling. Um, so I'm going to give this, I think, overall, as I reread all of these Greg Isles books and review them in order of publication for the channel, I think this is going to be likely my least favorite, but something I enjoyed for all the wrong reasons, which I mentioned. Um, and I'm, so I'm probably going to give this a seven out of 10. Um, uh, cause, uh, I mean, brilliant in ways, uh, brilliant for its time. Um, but probably the most dated, probably the one that, the, probably the one book that I, in my whole collection that hasn't aged all that gracefully, if you know what I'm saying. 